So, I, I'm Kenneth Montague, and I'm a dentist, basically, who uh, has become an art collector. And sometimes I do some curatorial work, but, but mainly I'm an art collector, and I think that the focus, maybe the short time frame today, would be to perhaps talk about some new acquisitions in my wedge collection. I think that's probably a better way to go than you know, going through a big, a big history, but I should give you a little background. Um, I was born in Windsor, across from Detroit. My parents are from Jamaica, and there's sort of a bit of a tri-cultural kind of uh, feeling that I think I kind of convey to people that can, sometimes can't figure it out. Is Canadian accent, American, or, you know, like it's, it's always kind of where you're from. And that, I'm, I'm kind of of that where are you from generation of Canadians. <laughs> And uh, it's mostly when you travel internationally, like, oh, there's black people in Canada? Like, it's, it can get that crazy. But in fact, growing up beside Detroit, I think had a great impact on me as a collector. There's early days visiting the Detroit Institute of Arts, Henry Ford Museum, and those kind of story places. Kind of set me on a path, even as a 10 year old, I was sort of looking at work like Van Der Zee. I can remember seeing when I was 10 in a, in a show in Detroit that moved me and I thought I want to have a longer relationship with these images than just seeing them on the page of a magazine or in a gallery, which is an unusual feeling in a kid. But I was collecting everything. I was collecting seashells and I was collecting, you know, coins. And after a while, you know, art became something that I wanted to live with. So um, there's there's two sort of streams that sort of happened. I, I started a gallery in my home in 1997 called the Wedge Gallery because it was a wedge space and plan. It was a 50 foot long gallery and started on showing some works of friends like Michael Chambers and then bringing works from around the world that would always to do with black identity and sort of an exploration of a kind of a, you know, a phenomenon that might have happened locally say 1950s in, in uh, Senegal or in Nigeria or the Harlem Renaissance in New York so we bring Van Der Zee. And it was always sort of the first space that was bringing these, these artists for solo shows in Canada. So we kind of, in a very organic way, I realized I don't want to be an art dealer. I, I like telling stories, so it sort of became more of a curator. So then, at a certain point, stopped completely with a gallery, and now it's more of a not-for-profit organization called Wedge Curatorial Projects, and a personal art collection called the Wedge Collection. Again, the double meaning is sort of for artists that I'm trying to wedge into the mainstream of contemporary art. So these days, um, it's become a busy life and I'm on the team, uh, Modern's Africa Acquisitions Committee. So we travel once a year to a city that we choose in Africa, do studio visits, talk to other collectors, figure out where things are headed and try to make suggestions for an institution like the Tate. It's the largest public gallery in the world and they have a real dearth of images of contemporary black art and African art, so we're you know trying to kind of make changes that way. And uh, here in Toronto, also working now with the Ryerson Image Centre with that board, and increasingly with the AGO, so trying to kind of wedge our stories into the mainstream of contemporary art is really what I do. So I'll zip along and show just the last, maybe five or six artworks that I've purchased for the Wedge Collection in the last year. So uh, let's see if we can Um, just, just now I was getting a phone call, literally sitting here during the break from the bank saying, we need the bank transfer number for like an artwork that I've just purchased. And this is a, 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 a painting, a watercolor from Marcia Curie, who's not really on the radar. There was an article in her in the New York Times last year from Holland Cotter, so she's sort of becoming better known. But she's, she's from Nigeria, and the Tate Committee, we took a trip to Nigeria last year, and I, first got acquainted with her work, but she's lived now for 20 years in Europe and in America. And I think that's kind of informed and changed her work. So she is someone who studied in, at the University of Ensuka, uh, with a professor like Ellen Atsui. So she started with a very kind of now familiar kind of graphic treatment with lines. And, and it was sort of, in a lot of ways, her work was much more figurative. And now it's become abstract and even minimal, which is also a big change for me as a collector, where I've always been about portraiture, and the last few years I'm sort of moving, kind of in a way, post-portraiture. So this is a watercolor with cola nut ink, like the cola nut, and 
um, and wide, and uh, it's called the mistress, but you can sort of maybe think about a, a female form and sort of elongated. Very beautiful work. Um, just a lot of you academics here, you should also know that Marcia Curie is the partner of um, Chica uh, Okeke. They, they're in Princeton, New Jersey. Um, I, look, I hope that her work will be wider accepted. Yeah, we'll roll along. Some work that I purchased after going to the Joburg Art Fair uh, in Johannesburg in South Africa. These are young Himba tribesmen. And uh, the typical thing that we see in National Geographic is like, you know, these Namibians that are always like spear in hand, wildebeest beside them. You know, this photographer who's an urban Namibian went as a kind of a master's of photography project and went and found some of his countrymen that were actually kind of doing their own thing and sort of very contemporary view of the Himba tribe. These guys are styling themselves, taking their own picture. You can see they've got the camera apparatus ready for that picture. And I just think that's a really interesting kind of work in terms of like personal style, where things are at. Christina in the Middle's work explores Afrofuturism. That's in the book actually that's going around at the show that was at the Studio Museum. Um, some very interesting work uh, by a performance artist named Ati Pacharuga from South Africa as well. It's very, very um, kind of post-identity in some ways. He does these performances that are memorable. Uh, some new work from Ebony Patterson, who many of you may know is a Jamaican artist and is sort of thinking new ways, new, new ways of exploring masculinity in its, in its forms in Jamaica. I think she's a, a really important artist who I hope will be on a, on a bigger stage as the years come. And finally, I'll end with uh, work that I just purchased for the collection from a show that is a Wedge curatorial project, and I hope that some of you will have the energy to join us later. Uh, we'll give a tour with Wedge tonight at 6.30 at the Gladstone. The show is um, featuring works by John Black, who recently graduated from Ryerson, and we're really trying to kind of tell our own stories now with Wedge, and so this, this sort of, um, the, the series of works. Think about Jamaicans in Toronto and Jamaicans in Jamaica. And this, this is kind of a love letter, an essay that this young guy did about businesses that are on Eglinton West in Toronto. And I think this is just an important document. So again, we're trying to be a repository for these stories with the collection. And uh, I hope that you'll go to our website and, and learn a little bit more about Wedge. And I'm happy to talk to any of you, especially the the young artists and sort of see where everybody's at and we'll take it from there. Thank you.